Well, hi there again. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, well, one actually. Uh, I've finished my... Well, it's not a tiger stop, is it? I'll be towed off for that. But I've finished my stop as far as I want to go for the minute, although I've got some uh, some development plans in hand. I'll just uh, tell you where we are with it. Um, that's the, the bed that runs down there. Uh, down the end, we've got the chonky stepper motor. Excuse the Wago clips, they're um, there, they're there because I can't be asked to uh, do it properly yet. Like I say, there's a few things I need doing on it. So we've got a 50 to 1 gearbox. I'll come back to that in a minute. And this is the end. Uh, 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 we've got 2.7 meters that we can use here. Uh, that's the, the stop mount. Again, this needs boxing in. Uh, it's, it's, on, it's adjustable. Uh, not, you know, not on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, generally for zeroing, zeroing it out. I'll try to say that later. Uh, so we've got the stop comes down here. A little bit of um, solid uh, three-quarter, 1904 bar. Um, got a little dog leg on there. A little bit further down there, and then the stop face, which uh, is rather ingeniously made like this, so that we can clamp something else to it if we need wider stops or. Uh, whatever depends on what we're cutting all right um yeah this seems a bit of an abortion to be fair um it seems a complete you know mess up but actually works really really well and it works well for a couple of different uh reasons one this whole thing can be taken out it can be flipped over to here and i gain an extra full meter off the end of the stop so from 2.7, it goes to 3.7, nearly four meters. So when we're out to that long, we don't really make anything longer than, um, than four meters. It's just, uh, it's just the size of our shop. We, do, we don't really do it. Um, if we needed longer stop, then we could probably fabric cobble and make it work to make a longer stop. So it's not like I say, and we've only got this uh, little code saw little old cold saw um, and we don't put much big through it but what we do put through it is one hell of a lot of small cuts on a weekly basis we make thousands of cuts so we'll get through a couple of those blades sometimes a week sometimes a blade will last more than a week whatever um, but yeah this thing cuts a lot uh, I mean there's no real well there's plenty of examples around the shop of what it cuts cuts that Cuts those over there, cuts those bits of tube, cuts those bits of tube, cuts handrail bits and pieces. Uh, we got it cutting bits for that. We got it cutting a whole bunch of stuff down there, which is a lot of plasma cut bits, but also saw cut bits. Uh, so yeah, this goes on and on and on. Uh, this, we just make a lot of cuts. Um, the operation of this is really, really straightforward. I must admit the uh, the coding was a little bit more interesting than I thought. Um, it's we just use a straightforward uh, in that box there. We've got power supply. We've got an Arduino. We've got a little buck converter to uh, convert uh, 48 volts down to five for the Arduino, and we've got a motor controller. And that's it really. Um, so the Arduino Arduino controls the motor controller, which in turn controls the motor, which moves the stop up and down. Uh, I've used a Nextian display, which is a little touch display, which is probably going to fail on me now I said that. Um, but it's this is just the basic sort of, you know, your numbers to punch in and a few functions. Nothing really fancy. Um, we've got a park function. Um, there will be a list function. Um, oh, that list function there. Um, and what that will do, that will take you to another screen that you'll be able to punch in a whole bunch of cut lists. Um, uh, I might even Bluetooth it up yet. I haven't quite decided, but uh, in the short term, um, we'll be able to punch in lots of different lists, and then we'll just be able to go next, 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 and the stop will move accordingly. So, you know, if we want to press a home, you know, we can, like I say, I knew it would do this. Uh, I've got dirty fingers, and the trouble is with dirty fingers, oh, hang on, where are we going? Is dirty fingers don't press uh, screens very well. So, back again and we have got so it homes it will carry on homing and, uh, and uh, make yourself a cup of tea sandwich 
have a good sleep and boom. So that is home to now directly on the saw blade. It just tickles it. Okay, so that's the reason for uh, this. This is so that I can adjust that up to the inside edge of the blade uh, and then we know it's zero. So we can check here, uh, it's, its current position look is zero. Now a lot of this is, is um, should be a little bit more automated, but it's just having the time. So that's a, a, a little bit of a factor, which is another thing I'm gonna come back to in a minute. So before I rub it on too long, which I do get accused of occasionally, uh, the motor and the gearbox, that is a 50 to one gearbox. 50 to one gearbox is way, way, way too um, slow. So um, as I'm sure you can appreciate, if you type in uh, one uh, meter, yep, and we hit the go button, okay. It moves, that's as fast as the Arduino can drive the steps on the motor. We've tried everything, we've tried different um, libraries and stuff, but at the end of the day, it's all relatively um, slow. So, um, as you can see, it doesn't move that fast. So, the idea is, is that we get a, um, uh, is that we're going to start, um, well, order a 20 to 1, and we'll try that. So that's the, that's the thing there. So the fact that we, oh, excuse me, I can't do all these things at once. I'm just not very good at it. What I'm going to do is just run a tape, and you can see that um, we are, oops, there we go. We are on the meter. Yep, so it moves a meter. You tell it to move a meter, it moves a meter. Nothing really fancy in that. It's just a matter of just coding the steps to, um, you know, to the linear movement. So it's not really a problem. Um, we also have a park function. So, and what that will do is that that will just take the motor back. And like I say, this is where you need a good sleep and a cup of tea. Um, takes the motor back to a limit switch just down there. Um, and then what it will do is, like I say, when it gets here, um, what it will do is it will just back off that limit switch so that you're ready to use it again. The reason I have it back off the limit switch is it's just so that it doesn't really lose its position. So it will always know where it is. So when it hits the limit switch in a minute, uh, you know, I don't know whether anybody wanna go and do some shopping and then come back when they've done that. So slow this thing. Um, but it's as fast as I can get it. And like I say, 50 to one gearbox, it is gonna be steady. So you will see, there we go. So it hit the limit switch, it came back. Uh, so it's off the limit switch. And if we can just um, check our current position, that there is our maximum travel, which is 2737. In the code, I've got it set that you can put in no more than 2700. So it's 2.7 bed from saw blade, yep, to the stop that's all up there that took its time getting there. All right. So yeah, this is the update at the stop. This is uh, it's a fairly simple, simple little thing. Um, there's nothing too difficult about it. We got some other functions that I'm going to be looking at later. Uh, we we can we can inch it or inch it. Sorry, America. Uh, we can just add millimeters or take millimeters away, uh, you know, one at a time. A uh, little bit of what's going on. Uh, clear buttons, current position buttons, escape buttons, uh, and that kind of thing. Yet to put an emergency stop on it. Um, I suppose it would be a good idea to have an emergency stop kind of here somewhere. Uh, purely because if you are caught in that stop and you're going up and you're going up into the saw, uh, it's not going to stop with a 50 to 1 gearbox on a motor that size. It's probably not going to stop with a, uh, you know, with a 20 to 1 gearbox, but uh, we shall see. So that's the next update is going to be the 20 to 1 gearbox. Uh, now, going back to me rabbiting, I've, I've, I've had a comment or two um, about just talking about what I do and not showing what I do. I understand that this is, um, that this is a problem. 
as far as um, time is concerned and how people want to learn how to do stuff. I'm not really, I'm not really teaching anybody, I'm just showing. Uh, so I want to make myself absolutely clear. I do not have the time to make tutorial videos, okay? I thought about it, I try to do little, um, uh, I try to do little bits of footage every now and again, I try to do little shorts just to show us how we're doing things, uh, but, but honestly, I'm really sorry guys, I know some people would like to see how do you do it, how did you do it, and all that business. I haven't got the time. Um, if ever I do get the time, I will certainly do it, and I will make sure that uh, you guys are, um, you know, well informed, and uh, you know we can do a step by step on some things occasionally. It's just not practicable for me at the moment, as as much as I would dearly, dearly love to. So keep the subscriptions coming, keep the likes coming, keep the comments coming. I do not mind, um, you know, slightly negative comments. Uh, I never complain about them. Um, it's just that there was a, there was this. It made me feel a little bit um, like I wasn't doing a good enough job for you guys, uh, and that it smarted a little bit because I, I I do this so that somebody with the right kind of knowledge can do the same. Uh, you know, I don't mind people copying me. I've got no, you know, I don't. Anybody anybody want the code for this? Let me know. I'll bung it to you. I don't I don't care. That's it's not it's not something that I'm going to be precious about. Uh, it's just I genuinely have not got the time. I work sometimes 80, 90 hours a week in this business and I get the odd Saturday afternoon, like this afternoon, um, where it's wet, it's raining. My guys have worked this morning. They'll be in tomorrow on a Sunday to do some more work. Uh, and we just haven't got the time to, to do tutorials. If this was a, a channel that was paying me to uh, create the content then I would certainly you know do more tutorials um, on everything that I do but everything is so one-off um, you know it's it, it is just it's amazing it's just <laughs> I just get these ideas and I just want to go ah, back of it let's just do it you know and just see what happens so yeah my apologies if somebody is you know jump into this channel and they want tutorials it's something I just cannot find the time to do. Uh, so again, I apologize. Anyway, here we go. So this is it. There you go. One stop. It is accurate to within about a quarter of a mil. Um, it's not meant to be ultra accurate. It never will be. Uh, the reason it won't be ultra, ultra accurate is because basically I'm using an Arduino. I'm using a, you know, a, a hobby uh, MCU, you know, little um, processor, computer, whatever you want to call them. Um, and it's just, you know, in that box. Um, and it's not really up for the job. I mean, you need proper PLCs. You need stuff that, that really does, you know, real-time computers that operate at much, much higher frequencies to be able to belt out these pulses to spin everything a little bit faster. Um, and obviously, you know, with you, you'd get the accuracy as well. That's one thing with the 50 to 1 gearbox is it does make it exceedingly accurate because um, there's no backlash in these um, cheap gearboxes. Uh, that was, I think that gearbox there was 80, 88 pounds. Um, so, you know, that's not a lot of money for a 50 to 1 gearbox that's got the kind of torque that, that thing's got. So there we go. So if you do like the content and, uh, you know, you want to see more, just like and subscribe because I will keep it coming. Uh, we do have um, always got little interesting projects coming on board. Uh, I'll keep you updated with this one and of course Doom walking over here. We've got this one. We all know, know about this one. Uh, this machine just does not rest. It's, um, it's fabulous. It's starting to get a little bit complicated to be fair. Uh, Luke has at MyPlasm heard about my, uh, my water omic problem. And uh, bless his con socks, he's going to send me through his Omic Professional for me to try and test. And I will review it and uh, show you how to fit it and install it. That will be a tutorial-based thing um, because I want to know myself. And I think he wants feedback from me um, and some others, of course, uh, so that he can produce this and, and just get 
get it a little, you know, get the omics sensing side of things just a little bit more controllable because the problem I've got is that when the nozzle gets wet, it's got a set impedance and uh, I think it's impedance. Um, it's got a set impedance and the water just shorts it and it it won't work. So that's why I went floating head with all the, um, you know, with the previous video that I showed you. So there we go. Um, he's sending that um, to me to install, to try and review, and I'll probably try breaking it. And, and you guys will be in on that. So uh, I'm looking forward to that and I hope you are as well. Uh, there's another little thing that's gonna appear a little bit later uh, because I rabbit on apparently. So we have finally got our intermediate tooling, nice brand new tooling. We got our shoe for the bottom tooling. Um, and this, this machine here, I'm gonna have to pan back, sorry. I'm tripping over my own butt here. Um, so we're going to get this ladder, little bad boy, um, up and running. That will also be um, computer controlled. It'll, it, I'll have a go at CNC in it myself. We'll see what happens. Um, I've got a guy who said that he could build me a board, but I haven't heard from him for a week or two. So I think he's probably a little bit uninterested, but we shall see. Uh, it shouldn't be difficult. I mean, it's forwards and backwards, up and down. There's not a, you know, it's it's not a difficult thing to to kind of figure out the stops and a few other odds and sods with it. I don't quite know how they work on this one. Um, I've been informed that they're liable to break because the stops are actually in the RAM. Uh, and we've got this kind of gizmo on the side that should spin, it sort of spins, it sort of doesn't. So anyway, that's just a little thing that's gonna come up at some point in the near future. So once again, uh, thanks for your subs, thanks for your messages, thanks for your likes. And I will see you soon. Now, everybody, have a little look at that. Yay. Take care now. Bye.